Hello, prospective tourists of paradise, and welcome to How to Survive the Bahamas, a sequel to the critically acclaimed 30 Quirky Ways to Die on a Cruise. In today's seminar, we will be covering the basics of how to survive the everyday catastrophe in the tropics. Some of you may only associate this country with the picturesque be beaches found in the backdrop of some Insta model's bikini pic, and others may see it as the ideal place to uh, cast some rods with the boys. Either way, you probably don't see this cluster of exotic islands as a threat. And so, my friend, you have made your first mistake. Step one, getting there. Let's say, for some poor reason, you've decided the Commonwealth of the Bahamas is your ideal vacation destination, and now you've got to get from here to there. Option one is cruise. Have you ever wondered why there are so many cruise ships registered to the Bahamas? It's because our laws are as laid back as our beach bums, and there are some friendly cruise operators that are looking to get away with some nasty deeds. Let's just say there's a reason one cruise ship has been fondly nick nicknamed the Empress of Disease. Your best bet is a quick plane ride from Florida. <sighs> You'll be safe and secure as one can be. Never mind the trail of crashed planes lead to the, leading to the runway. I promise that probably won't be you. Step two, navigation. Congrats, you've made it. And now you want to get from the airport to your exo exotic outer island of choice. When asking for directions, you will likely come across this word. It is pronounced key, not K. Make this mistake once and that friendly Bahamian will be hacking you to death with their machete. Pronunciation is a deathly serious matter. Once you have your directions, it's time to get moving. Taxis and ferries are the most popular form of local transportation. But be warned, there will be moments where you will be uncomfortable because the seat belts are broken or because the ferry's captain is day drinking, but it's fine. Locals use these services every day and most of them are alive and well. Step three, fun. Of course, what would a vacation be without fun? How about relaxing under a coconut tree? Wrong. More people are killed by falling coconuts every year than shark attacks. Maybe climbing a tree instead? No, poison wood trees are, the, are plentiful and inconspicuous. Their rashes will make poison ivy seem like a pleasant dream. What about a stroll down the white sand beaches? Don't even think about it. The Portuguese man of war often washes up on our beaches and their stings can be fatal. So, what can you do for fun on this paradise island? Good question. Step four, in case of emergency. You wake up one morning experiencing some gnarly stomach pain. Your first instinct may be to contact your nearest hospital. <laughs> you fool. You've made the same mistake as 2016 Minnesota man who was told by Bahamian doctors that he has a burst appendix. By the time he woke up from anesthesia, he had a foot-long incision down his chest and stomach. But at least his appendix was gone. Nope. He returned home to be told, told by his doctors that not only was his appendix still inside of him, but it was also perfectly healthy. In conclusion, if you must have an emergency, make sure to have it in America. Ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between, I sincerely hope you've enjoyed my presentation. Given that tourism is the most lucrative Bahamian industry, we would love for you and your wallets to come and pay us a visit. Any questions? <laughs>